Good afternoon, Laura. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you doing? I'm very well. I just watched Werewolf by Night and I'm just in awe. The craftsmanship and the world building and the effects and the acting is just brilliant. Have you seen it? I have. I saw it for the first time just before it got officially announced announced at D23. And um, I loved it. And I, I was really like surprised I guess because I didn't have much of a sense of what it was that we were making I mean I knew that I knew what the um you know I knew that we were doing a bit of a uh, a tribute to the genre you know the 30s and 40s monster movies and um you know obviously I knew it was all Halloween based and spooky but I, I had so little um so little knowledge of kind of Michael's overall vision or actually more specifically his specific visions in certain scenes. You know, he knew certain things that were going to happen that I just didn't know. And so it's so often the way with this stuff, you just kind of go in a bit blind, you trust and you just do the best in your part of the job and then, you know, (laughs) see what comes of it in the end. And I was just really, really thrilled. I really enjoyed it. Yes. So tell me about your experience filming it. What was it like? It was a lot of fun. And the strange thing about it was that it, you know, it was really easy to forget that we were filming something that was part of the MCU. You know, it felt like somebody, specifically Michael's little passion project, you know, it felt like we were working on some little indie project where, (laughs) you know, all of the, there was was very little in the way of CGI and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was just all practical sets, practical costumes, real actors, you know, it's, it's, um, it didn't feel like how I'd imagined shooting something for Marvel would be. So that was lovely because it allowed us just to concentrate on the job, on the scenes, on the characters. Um, Everything was very collaborative. You know, Gael and I worked together on the scenes and we would sit with the, with the writer that was on set, Heather, and we would work with the dialogue right up to the point that we were shooting. And it all felt like everybody's, everybody was kind of welcome to bring thoughts and ideas and, yeah, if it felt it, it felt very artistically free, and mm. it just yeah, it was just fun then. I love it. So Elsa Bloodstone, she's such a beloved character. Were you familiar with her? What was your research process like? I wasn't familiar at all with her. Um, I when Michael told me the character that uh, that I would be playing, I did kind of seek out whatever material I could get. Um, in the comics, but he had also warned me that this wouldn't be, you know, drawing very much from those comics. So yeah. I read it so that, you know, I could pull whatever I could and also that I could have that little bit of background to her and just get a sense of her spirit rather than the specifics, I think. And then it was a case of uh, reading the script to find out what this version of Elsa was at this moment, you know, because I think what we get yeah. and what I gathered from reading that script was that this is kind of, Elsa in a in between two worlds at the moment she's in a little moment of self-discovery and what happens on this night in particular is going to define her going forward and so it's a little bit of the beginning of a journey so we just wanted to capture uh, just that specific moment for her and give hints about what has gone on in her past and possibly what might come in her future but that this was really about that one night and so um, yeah I just kind of let all of that just simmer and um, mm. and then tried to concentrate on the scenes at hand rather than too much kind of remembering what what I'd read and you know right. what, what research I had done with her. Yeah yeah I imagine there was a lot of stunt training involved right? Yeah, well, I mean, I love doing stunts. It's one of my, it was a big draw for me in in doing, in playing this role um, because I had been doing a lot of stunts uh, on the show that I'd been doing for HBO, The Nevers. And mm-hmm. so that I've been in, in and out of training for that for about three years. And so right. that worked really well because in fact, we didn't have much time in Atlanta where we were shooting on Werewolf. I think I had about two weeks of prep. Oh and my gosh. So it was two weeks to learn these fights and, and learn sword fighting for the first time. So I've never done sword fighting before. Um, so I was really glad that I had those skills ready to go and that those were muscles that I had, you know, absolutely been used to exercising. So it was, right. yeah, thankfully, I think I was quite quick on, on picking the choreography up and stuff, but it is it is one of my favorite elements of this stuff Mm -hmm. so tell me more about collaborating with Michael Michael is one of the loveliest people I have ever met and it's 
at the same time, you kind of have to stop looking at him and thinking, wow, that is Michael Giacchino, the <laughs> right. composer in the world. You know, you have to go, right. okay, get all of that. He's now your director, just concentrate on what he's saying. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, and he was just, he brought so much enthusiasm and passion and a genuine love for this genre. I mean, he says himself, he's been wanting to make this movie since he was 10, you know. And so he brought that to the set every single day. And it really made it feel like we were all part of Michael's little passion project. And when somebody brings that level of enthusiasm, it is of course infectious and you just want to get really stuck in and and just give him the best that you possibly can because you know it means so much to him on a personal level. And yeah, as a result, it was, um, it was, it was lovely to be part of that experience of get, get, being able to be part of this first time that he is directing something um, that isn't a short and, and, and first time he's directing for the MCU, you know, it felt like a real privilege to be part of that. But he also didn't hold the reins really tightly. You know, he really did allow us so much freedom. And like I said, Gael and I getting to really explore our characters and do what we wanted to with them and, and within the scenes and kind of um, helping to shape those scenes that's just not something that I had expected and particularly not from somebody who is more or less a first time director. Right, right. So tell me more about those discussions with Gail about your character dynamics and the different scene work. I mean, I love working with Gail. He, he is incredibly supportive and really, um, I think what he enjoys about digging into a character is very similar to the stuff that I enjoy as well. So we were always trying to get back to what is the reality for this person? You know, it's very easy, obviously, when you're shooting stuff um, that is set in such a fantastical situation that that you can forget to uh, to to root it in in reality, and that's what we kept going back to. And so he was always really great at pulling that up whenever whenever it was needed and said, no, no, I don't think that this is working quite right. We need to, you know, have a think about this. And he always really wanted to hear my thoughts on it. And so we just um, really got together in our own time and on set lots to just really work through that. And, and it was, um, it was just a process that I really enjoyed because it's so helpful to know that there is another actor there who feels the same way about that material as you do and is looking out for the same stuff and just doesn't want you know a moment of it to ring untrue or to kind of run off in the wrong direction and then you add to that the fact that he's just a fantastic actor and so in the moment it's so easy to act with him because you're not getting anything other than pure truth so it makes my job very easy yeah and the director himself too yeah yes absolutely mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's an incredibly multi-talented man yes. Yes. So I imagine there was a lot of secrecy on the project because it was a Marvel project. So what was that experience like? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it's one of those things that it, it makes sense because, of course, I don't want anybody to know anything about it early either. So right. it's not something that's very hard to maintain because... I don't want any of those secrets getting out. I want this to be brand new to everybody when they watch it. And I don't want anybody, um, you know, having any spoilers or seeing anything they shouldn't. And sometimes that can be a, a little frustrating when you are on other projects where they don't have, you know, that level. And, and often, of course, they don't have the resources. They don't have the, you know, the, the, the power to be able to um, keep things that secret. And right. so we're very lucky, I think, uh, you know, working within marvel that um that all of those things are are in place that you that you can but yeah it was quite crazy for you know i i think i got i got the job uh, almost exactly a year ago and so for a year it's not just something that i can't you know share with the internet it's also something that i couldn't really share with even most people i know personally you know you know beyond your the people you live with it's like you just can't <laughs> tell anybody about it and that's always quite strange but it's exciting because you know it's for a good reason so so what was the audition process like within all those confines of secrecy it was a lot more straightforward than I thought it would be. Um, oh, yeah? I always, yeah, I always figured with Marvel, it would be, you know, set in screen tests and climb to the right. top of Everest, you know. Um, <laughs> but it was just, I got a breakdown saying that this was a Halloween special. I think that it said that, I think it said it was werewolf, but I'm not even sure about that. And 
did I want to have a Zoom call with Michael? So I came on the Zoom call not knowing even what character I was, you know, meeting for. And nice. Michael explained to me uh, all about the project and all about Elsa. And he showed me some kind of artwork that he'd got done, you know, for to just, just give me an idea of the look of scenes and of the character and stuff like that. And really, we just connected over our mutual love of horror movies, particularly th those, you know, those old Universal Monster movies and uh, Hammer Horror. I'd explained to him that I'd watched them all growing up. And and really, at the end of that, that was it. I had the job. So I, wow. you know, I didn't have to read for it or anything like that. I don't think I could have read for it because I doubt there was a script at that point. But had there been a script, they would not have shown it to me. Um, and then, yeah, then, then it was just that strange thing of kind of waiting to hear more because of course, with Marvel, you know, you don't see scripts a long time in advance because that will just add to the risk of them of them leaking. And so I think that I probably saw an actual script a few weeks before we started shooting. And then it was like, okay, great, let's let's go. <laughs> Would you want to revisit the character in the future? Would I want to, sorry? Revisit the character in the future? Oh gosh, yes, want... absolutely. It really does feel like we're just at the beginning of Elsa becoming the person that... Um, that we know her to be in the comics, you know, this this um, this kind of uh, fierce, very self-assured, um, enjoying herself, I think, enjoying her world. And I would, you know, I would love to just keep going on into that. I'd also love to explore more of the relationship between Jack and Elsa, because we, I think that's something that we just see, you know, blossoming. And I'd love to find out what that is, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll basically do anything that, that they that they want me to do. I love I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you've had some amazing collaborators, amazing scene partners over the years. I know you've spoken about Patty Constantine, Hugh Jackman, Gael. Uh, so who would you like to work with again? You've worked with in the past. You found really giving and really playful. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, I think a lot and um, all those people that you've mentioned I adore and would really happily work with any single one of them again. I think that a lot of my favorite collaborators though have been other women because the mm -hmm. more, more recently that's a chance that we've had as actresses, I think, is to be able to play, um, you know, uh, complex female characters alongside other complex female characters because in the past a lot of the time you'd be you'd be the token woman or you know if there was if there was one complex female character in a project then that was quite enough so yes. now we're getting a bit more of an opportunity to have two three several of them in any given in any given project and so you know I'm thinking the likes of on stage with Genevieve O'Reilly who's just the most amazing Irish actress um, yeah. and you know on screen with Anne Skelly I'm mentioning all the Irish ones I suddenly realized <laughs> um, <laughs> you know with okay. Anne Skelly and the Nevers I just love working with her we're so, you know we get along so well and um, yeah we you know we I think we have such um, such an ease with each other now just having having worked together so much and mind you that yeah. kind of came from day one I have to say uh, so yeah I just think the more really female um uh, female-led projects, the better, you know, because I really do love collaborating with women. Mm. And since you mentioned the Nevers, there's so much anticipation for part <laughs> two. What can you tell people what's coming up? I have no idea. Um, we uh, we shot another six episodes, which is essentially the second part of season one. Right. And um, I'm just waiting to find out when they're definitely going to air. I think the plan was the end of this year, but I don't know that 100%, so don't quote me on it. Okay. And finally, what have you been watching lately that you've really enjoyed? I have, oh, I like, see, I'm, <laughs> I like a lot of true crime. <laughs> so, okay. so I'm usually going through that whenever I can. And um, there's, there's a, a particular show in the UK. Oh, well, you guys have it as well. Oh, you have Dancing with the Stars. We have Strictly Come Dancing, okay. which is my favorite thing in the whole world. Like, you know, second to my children um <laughs> and that on a Saturday night and even then it's quite even and uh, that goes on the Saturday night and that is 
kind of the only thing that I will religiously sit down every single week and watch. So these are not, you know, these these are not top cultural suggestions I'm giving here. These are just That's my, fine. The particular preferences. Yeah, <laughs> no, everyone needs their own escape. That's fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much thank for you. the art that you bring to the world. I really appreciate it. Have a lovely day. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks a lot. Have a lovely thank day. You. Bye.